everybody. So can you believe that we're in week 11 already on our lovely black sheep temperature blanket along? That's right, week 11. Look at this, I have my thing. It's starting to look a little bit kind of mm, cruddy because you know I've been using it so much. And um, yeah, it's been very warm the last week in St. Louis. In fact, my high temperature, and I'll flip this down a little bit, but my high temperature on Wednesday, which of course is my day that I, you know, choose for my blanket is 73 degrees, 73. Now that's not the warmest day that I have had so far. That one was actually an 81 degree day. 73 is still pretty decent, especially for March. I mean, technically we're still kind of in winter. It's not really spring yet, but we've been having some really beautiful days, sunny, warm, very nice. But anyway, 73 degrees. Can you believe that? I know. I know but what does that mean for our temperature blanket well for me it means that I am going to be using blue moon this one that's a lovely shade isn't it love this shade of blue moon for my square this week so let me find my blue moon in my giant bag and remember this is our big big black sheet bag we do sell these at the shop we still have a few of them left but when they're gone I don't know if we can get any more um, source that Tina had for these, um, it's kind of gone. So we had a giant stash of them and then they're almost gone. Can you believe that? I, I love these bags. They're nice. They're see-through. They got the logo on them. They're easy to use. They hold a whole blanket's worth of yarn. Um, anyway, this is not blue, blue moon. Hang on. Blue moon. There it is. Blue moon. Isn't that a lovely shade? So pretty. So pretty. It's coming up just a little bluer, a little brighter on the camera, but it's actually a softer blue. It's a very soft blue. Anyway, and of course, I am using my Mian cotton. We've already established this, but in case you're new, it's the Kokomo Yarns Mian cotton. I'm using my US 3 signature needles, and I do like circulars, so I use circulars. But if you like straights, you can use straights. And I'm also using, hang on, my blanket along pattern from a few years ago. But um, yeah, we're gonna make it bigger. We're gonna make it bigger. So I'm doing one square a week, which means that when I get to, um, well, I have 24 squares in here. So I, I have to add some more patterns to it at some point. But very soon I'm going to have to start adding patterns because you know, I'm getting the itch. I'm getting the itch to put some new patterns in and have fun with it. So anyway, let's get started. I'm going to uh, turn the camera down, like you know, and we'll take a look at the blanket along pattern and pick out a new pattern for um, this week and our blue moon colorway so hang on okay so here is my blanket along pattern and remember of course it calls for a yarn that we aren't using and a needle size that's different from what i'm using so uh you can totally change patterns you don't have to do exactly what the designer says just want to point that out let's see so i've done the broken rib and the bordered squares uh, i have not done the checkered basket stitch yet we could do this one done chevron stripes, the cloverleaf eyelet, and the filigree. Um, let's see. Oh, interlocking lattice was last time. That was a lot of fun. Um, let's see. I haven't done flying geese yet. What else haven't I done? Well, a little checks, but I'm not really in the mood for color work today. Um, Paitsu is really fun. This one's really fun with those twisted stitches. But I don't know if I'm really feeling in the mood for that. You know, I'm really, I'm kind of thinking, let's do the checkered basket stitch. I think it sounds, I think it sounds like a good one. So with the checkered basket stitch, we're going to cast on 32 stitches. And remember, we're going to use whatever color we want. Just ignore that. Uh, we're going to follow our chart and repeat our stitches between the red lines. But again, remember, I printed mine in black and white. So follow those stitches between the red lines four times, repeat the entire chart four times and then work rows one and two again. Now I'm guessing I'm going to have to actually work through probably row eight in order to make my squares square. And that is the key here. If you're using a different yarn, different needle size, all you have to do is just knit until your square is approximately square because that is our goal. Um, let's see, we don't have anything really difficult here. We have some slips with the yarn in back. Um, we have knits and purls, and then we have slips with the yarn in back and slips with the yarn in front. 
And all that does is um, it gives a little texture to the front. So you'll have a float in the front instead of a float in the back. And let's see. Um, oh, except that this is our row three. So this is our slip with the yarn in back, which means we're actually going to slip these with the yarn. Um, oh, always in the back. Yes. Sorry, I was reading that incorrectly. See, I do make mistakes and it's okay. So we are going to just slip with our yarn in the back of the work um, all the time. And that's all right. Okay, let's get started on this. So to get started, I need to cast on 32 stitches. Okay, I've cast on my 32 stitches. So now I'm basically going to slip one and knit the rest of the stitches and then slip one and purl the rest of the stitches. And then I'll be back with you for row three. So row three, I'm going to slip my first stitch, then knit two stitches. So slip one, knit one, and uh-oh, look, I popped my stitch off, but luckily I can put it right back on. Two. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to slip two stitches with the yarn in back. And so I'll just slip and slip. Then knit one, two, three, four. Now I know that I'm going to repeat those stitches between my red lines four times, so let's do that again. We're going to slip, slip, one, two, three, four, and again, slip, slip, one, two, three, four, and slip, slip, one, two, three, four. We're going to end that slip, slip, Knit one, two, and three. Now on the back side, we are going to have some fun because we aren't going to be purling. We're actually going to be knitting because remember we do the opposite of our stitch. So slip one here and don't purl. Knit one, two, and now we are going to slip our yarn again, slip, slip. And one, two, three, four, slip, slip. One, two, three, four, and slip, slip. One, two, three, four, slip, slip. One, two, three, four, slip, slip, and one, two, and we'll end with a purl. So there we go. And this is what it should look like. We have some nice slips, some strong slips with our little floats in the back. Just like that. Now we're going to do it all over again for row five. Slip one, and we're going to knit one, two, slip, slip, knit one, two, three, four. Oh, you know, I think I slipped these knit wise last time. So here's something I should be slipping purl wise where I just slide my, slide my needle through. Um, when I come to those slip stitches. And yeah, this is what I should not be doing. I, I clearly slipped my stitches in the wrong direction, but this is a great time to talk about directionality with your slipped stitches. So I should have kept them slipped purl wise, 
That way they are oriented and ready to work when I come to row seven. So it should have been like that. Just like that. So make sure that when you're doing these that you are slipping your stitches purl-wise. Just a little heads up there. Okay. Here we go again. Oh, I keep forgetting. We're going to knit on this side. Knit two. Slip, slip. Knit one, two, three, four. Slip, slip. One, two, three, four, slip, slip. One, two, three, four, slip, slip. And one, two, three, four, slip, slip. One, two, and purl the last stitch. There we go. Okay, now rows seven and eight, we're just going to slip that first stitch and then knit all the way across, slip the first stitch, purl all the way across, and that will lock in these slipped stitches. We have to be careful not to slip our stitches for too many rows because if we do, then it creates puckers and gathers, which if that's what you want is great, but if it isn't, then we may not want to do that. Now I'm also noticing that over here it says to slip two uh, slip with the yarn in back twice on my row four when really this should be a slip with the yarn in front because we want to keep all of our slipped stitches on the wrong side of our work. So if you are following along, I need to correct my written um, my written pattern for my checkered basket stitch. So anyway, just a little heads, heads up there. But yeah, that's what it's that's what it looks like. Okay, and then when we get to nine and ten, um, we're doing the same thing. We're just shifting over where we have slipped our stitches so that we get a checkered basket stitch. Um, and that actually, I grabbed this one. Um, it actually looks like this. This is my wool one, but this is what it looks like with these slip stitches. So anyway. This is what we're going for. All right, I am going to go uh, work on this. And when I come back, I will have my square all completed. And, um, and, and we'll talk about what I had to do and how many extra rows I had to knit because it does say to repeat my chart four times and then work rows one and two again. But I have a feeling I'm going to have to go all the way through row eight in order to make my square a square. So I'll be back in a bit. Okay, hello, so I'm back. Clearly it's another day because it just takes me time to get things done right now. But Marshmallow is again with me because, you know, Marshmallow, he just likes to sit on my lap every time I come over here to do my videos. I think he knows, I think he knows that I am, uh, like, committed and I'm going to be sitting here for a little bit. So, anyway, still have my lovely temperature blanket, um, thermometer, I guess, over here with all of my different colors on it. But look, I finished, I finished my checkered basket pattern. Doesn't this look fabulous? Um, and you can clearly see my slipped stitches. And no, you can't play with that. He's trying to get the strings, of course, because he's a kitty. So anyway, um, there it is, the lovely checkered basket um, pattern. And that takes us through the end of week 11. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe that we are through week 11 and I'm going to be filming week 12 very soon. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of where we are. So just as a reminder, make sure that you are posting to your social media accounts and that you have tagged Black Sheep Fiber Emporium. Uh, so hashtag Black Sheep Fiber Emporium, hashtag Black Sheep Pearly Pirates if you're playing along with the um, blanket along because we're almost to the end of March, which means we are going to have our first quarter uh, quarterly winner and but you have to have tagged us so that I know to include you in uh, the contest otherwise psh, how am I supposed to know um, and it needs to be public if it's not public and I can't find it, it doesn't count but anyway um, there we go so I hope that you are enjoying our blanket along and um, if you've taken the weekly track like I have I've been enjoying my once a week 
um, pattern and yarn combo and trying it out. Now I did, um, yes, I did go ahead and I did um, one, two, three, four and a half. So I did knit through row, um, quit that marshmallow. He's such a goober. He's trying to get that string so bad. So bad, he wants it so bad. Um, anyway, nope, can't have my string, no. Look at this, kitty on the lap, what can I say? Uh, anyway, so I did have to go ahead and, and knit um, four and a half instead of um, four repeats of the chart. And I did end with a knit row and then a purl row just to help lock in those slip stitches. So you may find that you need to do that as well. And again, it's always, you know, knit to whatever your square size, your personal square size needs to be. So uh, you may need more or less of a repeat than what I have indicated. And that's okay. It's totally fine to change a pattern. Um, it's fine to adjust it for what you need. Totally fine. And oh, it's just my marshmallow. He's such a good kitty. Such a good kitty. Yeah. Are you my good kitty? Anyway, so while I hold the cat here, let me remind you all to please take care of yourself mentally, physically, emotionally, and craftually. Make sure that you are doing at least 15 minutes of crafting every day. I did not get my crafting in yesterday because I was packing orders. Thank you so much for all of the orders. And I didn't get my crafting in also because um, I had the Japanese box that came uh, today. So I have been working on a whole bunch of uh, inventory and packing again. So, um, yeah, that happened and we'll, con and I hope it keeps happening. Thank you so much for all the orders that you have been making. Um, it really helps us to feel like we are connecting with our crafters when we're finding things that you guys like and you order. So thank you. And if you have not yet checked out clearance, Tina moved a ton, I mean a ton of stuff to clearance. So make sure that you've checked out clearance um, because there's a whole bunch of great yarn in there. It's just stuff that we aren't going to carry in the future um, or things that we're trying to sell down um, just to make room because Tina's trying to kind of downsize and um, there may be some changes coming to Black Sheep Fiber Emporium in the future. That's sort of a foreshadowing. Um, if we were a book, that would be foreshadowing uh, or a movie. All right. Uh, so anyway, yes, please take care of yourself. Make sure that you have subscribed to our channel um, for, our, for our YouTube channel. Make sure that you have liked and followed us on our Facebook page, our Instagram account, and our TikTok account. I do put up different things um, in all of those places, and so does Tina. So make sure that you are checking out what we have going on. Um, and tell your friends about us, share us because you know, we love, we love sharing what we're doing. Okay. So I'm gonna let you guys go for now and, um, we'll be back with another knitted square very, very soon. All right. Bye.